What's up guys and welcome back to my garage. If you're enjoying this series, make sure you leave a like on the video. It'd be greatly appreciated. In the last episode, we did quite a bit of exploration, went out to the drag strip again for the second time and actually took part in the drag race with our very own El Camino. We then went to one of the many car wash locations scattered around the map, which was pretty cool. And lastly, we went out and secured two additional car lifts, one here for our main garage and another for the garage at the house that we don't really talk about very often, but it, it is there. So what I wanna do today is start our next project vehicle, and I really, really want that project vehicle to be a barn find. We did go out and, and explore a barn once before, and we were able to find a vehicle, but at that time, I don't think we really had that much money, certainly not enough to purchase the vehicle. So this time, this time I'm hoping it's different. The first thing we need to do is just make our way into uh, into town so we can start some pizza delivery jobs. Boy, do I love taking the old wolf wagon around town, dude. You just can't beat it. Well, you could, but that would be weird. The wind in our hair, the bugs in our teeth, all from, of course, not having a windshield. It's great. It, it really is. Builds character. So we're just going to rip the e-brake here real quick. We can just leave it on. And we'll make our way inside the pizzeria. Grab one of these here, uh, one of these here delivery jobs. So we usually have quite a few like in town. So I'm gonna focus on those first. If we strike out on, you know, the barn find portion of this at those three locations, we'll try elsewhere around the map. And you know what? All three of these are so incredibly close together that I think I'm actually just gonna hop in here and cut the ignition and we can just walk to all of them. I'm thinking one of them is going to be this house here down on the end. I do see a little blue waypoint of sorts. So if we just come down here, I have to remember how to do this without actually eating the pizza. I think right click is good. Right click is what we need to do. And then just drop it in the zone. Perfect. What we, what we don't want to do is left click. Then we would eat the pizza and just be out of the be out of the money right that's that's not ideal so first location we did strike out but that's okay on the um on the barn find that is we were able to get paid from that one as well and i think the last one is just up here around the corner on our right maybe third time's a charm right it is not this time around. So that does it for our deliveries very, very close to the pizzeria. We're going to head back there and uh, grab a couple more. Hopefully still sort of close, though. I I'd like to not have to drive super, super far. We've got, looks like, three deliveries up in an area known as Summer Camp. I can't say we've ever been over there. It's probably a, a nice place. And then Rocky Edge, which is just south of... Of Middletown where we are now so I'm gonna I'm gonna accept that one and hopefully we get lucky this time I think when we found our first barn find or somebody had offered us our first barn find I want to say it was on like our second or maybe third uh, third pizza sale and the fourth time we are striking out again so once again back to the pizzeria Gotta grab another pizza. And what a champ the wolf wagon has been so far, dude. Zero issues. Though I probably just jinxed myself by saying that. Anyways, let's go ahead and accept the three deliveries out in the summer camp area. This is gonna be a little bit more of a drive than I was hoping for, but uh, you know what? We gotta do it, right? Here we go, pulling into summer camp as we speak. Good memories out here, man. Good memories of summer camp. I mean, I've, I've never actually been here specifically, but I did do summer camp once. It was awful. It was terrible. It's, it's one of those things like you're homesick the whole time. For some reason, you really miss your parents. Dude, they have a hot tub out here. Must be nice, dude. Oh, camp is so hard. Oh, summer camp, the worst. They have a, they have a hot tub, dude. They're... They're living like Larry out here. Okay, fifth and sixth uh, deliveries did not did not do so well. I must have missed the one up here. Surely seventh time is the charm. There we go. Thank you for delivery. I have old barn that we want to bring down. It has some parts and a vehicle in it. Would you be interested in buying all the items? It would be two thousand buckaroonies. 
but it is just a fraction of what it is worth. I will mark the location on your map. abso freaking lootly It's like they knew that's precisely why we came here. Let's actually... Let's see where that thing is at. Still showing pizza deliveries. Good. Now we've been flagged just as a pizza delivery boy. And we've got to make our way back to Middletown. It looks like it's... It's pretty close by. Even though this drive has gone pretty well for the most part, you know, we haven't had any major accidents or, or spin outs or anything of the sort, I would still like to maybe get some new tires for this thing or just go over the suspension a little bit more. Oh, okay, it looks like we passed it because, check this out, under like really, really hard acceleration, it pulls to the right still so bad. Like, notice the steering wheel is straight, and as soon as I floor it, veers to the right. And I have no idea what's causing that, but definitely, definitely needs fixed. And it looks like there's our barn, right there. Hopefully we have a good vehicle inside, and this wasn't all for nothing, like... Okay, there's no vehicle. I don't remember that from our first... Uh, barn find adventure. I, okay, there we go. We have an NIV. But yeah, I don't remember there just not being a vehicle in there. I'm pretty sure as soon as we pulled up, uh, there was there was a vehicle. Okay, do we have a hood? We do have a hood. It looks like there's a spare right there, though. Check out the engine. Block is absolutely shot. It's going to take quite a bit of work to actually get this thing running, I think. Uh, suspension... Has a little bit of damage. It looks like that spring is broken. We have some very, very rusty components. I don't even know where to begin with this thing. Let's start with the price, huh? Let's start with the price. 6,800 bones. Original color was like a gasoline green. Kind of a kind of a gross color. It's now gray. Honestly, it looks like it just needs a bath. The clean state is very, very poor. Rust state is only four stars as opposed to like the three star vehicles we usually purchase from the from the dealership. Color condition, five stars. Overall condition, two. So again, it is going to need uh, quite a bit of work. Wait, sell? Oh, right, because we've, we've already essentially bought it for $2,000. That really, that really threw me off just there. As much as I would love to trailer this vehicle back to the garage myself, we don't currently own, nor did we bring the vehicle trailer that we would need for that. So I'm just going to spend 100 bucks, get it transported to the garage, and uh, we'll uh, sift through the parts pile here, see if there's anything at all that we really want to bring back. Yeah, I mean, there's some good stuff here that we could probably pawn off to old scapegoat if we if we really cared. But I, I don't think I want to even bother trying to transport it. Honestly, since the way that we've configured our wolf wagon, most of it would just fly out by the time we by the time we get home. And that is totally my fault. Alrighty, we're pulling back in to the garage parking lot. And it is time for us to officially start our next project vehicle it looks like it might have come into contact with our uh with our trailer just just a tad so the first thing i want to do is check to see if it would be even remotely possible to turn this thing over oil level looks pretty solid for the most part let's make sure we actually get that dipstick reinstalled there we go all right judging by the condition of it i don't expect this why can i not why can i not get inside I don't expect it to turn over. It's not even letting me in, dude. What is... Okay, hang on. Here goes nothing. It looks like we do have a little bit of fuel. Also has power from the battery. But not enough juice to actually turn it over. That's exactly what I expected. So we're just going to have to take a few extra minutes here to get it pushed in the garage instead. And actually, while we're out here, uh, we might as well give old girl a bath so we can really see what that what that color actually looks like. Supposed to be gray. Ooh, yeah, that's a nice, nice darker gray. A lot darker than the El Camino. That's almost like a primer gray. After washing probably years worth of dust and debris from the barn off of this thing, I'm surprised to see the paint condition is actually really good and the rust isn't even that bad. Like honestly, compared to some of the vehicles we've purchased from the dealership, this is pretty okay. So let's continue just getting this thing pushed in the garage, and then we can finally 
get going on it, but it's nice to give it a bath. I guess I never really realized just how short the wheelbase actually is on on these NIVs. Like they're they're kind of built like a Jeep. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we're not going to be able to inflate uh, that that driver side front tire, but I am going to try to inflate these other ones so that we can hopefully have a little bit of a easier time getting the lift arms underneath. All right, now that we've got it up in the air on the hoist, the first thing that I want to do with this new project is basically remove everything underneath of the vehicle. So it's it's just going to be a rolling shell. And it, it might not even be rolling. We might actually have to remove uh, all the wheels and tires as well to do what we need to do. But pretty much, I mean, from what I've, from what I've seen just kind of glancing at this thing, the underside is very very bad apart from the exhaust that's that's really the only good thing about uh underneath here okay and maybe maybe the drive shaft right maybe the drive shaft but pretty much everything else is gonna need pulled so let's grab our wrench and we'll get after it Okay, quick little update here for everyone who's been suggesting I just remove the engine and transmission as one complete assembly. It does not work. I have everything disconnected. The transmission brace right there is disconnected. It is still bolted up to the engine. Everything in the engine bay has been removed that we usually remove, including both of the engine mounts, and I still can't pick it up. But while I'm under here, I'm going to undo these four bolts here on the bottom. We're gonna lower the vehicle back down and then undo, I think there should be four more bolts on the top of the transmission. And now we can remove the transmission and the engine also comes out, but they do not like to be removed as one complete assembly. And maybe it works on some vehicles, maybe it just doesn't on, on others, but in my experience, it just ain't possible. I gotta say, I think the front end actually came out a lot easier and in far less pieces than the rear end did. You can see this is our rear axle, rear differential assembly, and over here on the floor, these are all the parts that we had to remove first just to get that thing dropped out of there. I thought for sure the front end was going to be more difficult just because we have, you know, the different steering components that we'd have to uh, have to deal with. Also, the NIVs are four-wheel or all-wheel drive. I think it's four-wheel drive. But um, we also have a, a front diff that we had to worry about. And that whole thing just came out as one complete assembly. And you, you gotta love that. You really do. So uh, underneath the vehicle now, we can see the main brake line is very rusty. That's going to need replaced. Uh, the steering box right there is also going to need replaced. Gearbox, of course. Engine. I'm not even going to touch on that stuff today. We'll save that for its own episode entirely. Uh, over here, the only thing that we really have to replace out of this pile are two brake lines. That's it. Everything else is is pretty solid. Of course, suspension components, all the rusty ones, those are getting replaced. Uh, the springs, I think all around actually, are broken. So those will also uh, need, need swapped around. But honestly, it's not nearly as bad as I expected it to be. But what we're going to do now is go through some of the some of the piles that we've sort of made around the shop and uh, anything that's rusty, bent, broken, whatever the case may be. We're just going to buy a, uh, a factory replacement for those items and then we'll see what we want to do from there. So we are working on an NIV with an inline four for now that could change later on. No spoilers, though. No spoilers. So I've already gone through and purchased uh, the two brake lines, the two soft brake lines that we needed. You know, I do have the battery on the charger, at least I thought I did. Whoops, have to put that back. No, it's it's not charging up. In fact, I think it's, I think it's losing power. So I'm just going to go ahead and sell this to the dumpster 
and we'll purchase a new one. The new battery is the only thing that we need to purchase from this category for right now. So we're gonna move on to suspension and I'm probably gonna have to go like back and forth between our parts pile and the catalog a few times just to figure out what all this stuff actually is. So we're gonna need a transfer case, of course, a drive shaft for the front and a right lower control arm, the long ones. There's that control arm. Only like 19 bucks, that's that's really not too bad. Uh, rear axle we will need. So I'm just gonna go ahead and buy that. I know that thing's rusty for sure. Keep working our way down the list here. Drive shaft front. We know we're gonna need one of those. Oh, the whole front cross member. Yeah, that's pretty dusted too. Let's just go ahead and buy a new one of those. Front differential from the outside seems seems okay. Steering box for 142 bucks. Transfer case for 93. And I loved our adjustable suspension so much on the Wolf Wagon project that I think I'm gonna go ahead and buy all four of these for the NIV as well. The way that I'm going about this project is I'll grab the new part from the room we just came out of. I'll then grab the old one and immediately get it chucked in the dumpster. That way everything kind of stays where we had it originally, but we're just swapping out the old parts for the new ones. As for the parts that are still installed on the vehicle, I usually just chuck them up there on the counter and if they're pretty easily removed, I just go ahead and do that and, and it's pretty much the same process. Out with the old, in with the new. All right, it's coming together. It is coming together. We do still have two more parts over here that we need swapped out. A rear upper control arm, the small ones, and then a rear shock absorber. It's gonna be 1725 for the upper control arm and 46 bones for the rear shock absorber. Now then, we have to start digging into both the front and rear, we'll call it axle assemblies. The front is definitely gonna be a bit more time consuming than the rear, so I think I'm gonna start with this guy. Yeah, I can already tell the rear end a walk in the park compared to how the front end is going to go. There's just there's just less back there, but we did have to remove a little bit more than the front. So it, it probably is the same amount of work. All we need, all we actually need to purchase is one new rear axle slash hub. And then I already had a, a set of rear brake pads over there on the counter. So I just went and grabbed one of those. It looks like we only need to replace the one. So we'll get that swapped around, get the whole thing bolted back together, and it'll be back in the car here in no time. Okay, actually comparing this rotor to this rotor, you'll notice it's very, very thin. So I'm gonna go ahead and toss this one in the trash and we'll buy a brand spanking new one. And just like that, the entire rear axle assembly and suspension components are all reinstalled. I decided to just leave our, our new, um, call it an adjustable coilover if you want. Uh, I decided to leave those completely maxed out, max height, just so that we will still have an easy time getting the hoist arms underneath. Maybe, again, depending on what engine we end up choosing for this vehicle, we might end up slamming it down to the ground. But... We'll, we'll wait on that. Now though, we can start digging into the front end and getting all of this disassembled. Disassembling the front was a little bit trickier than, than the rear axle, just because once we started to unbolt a few things, the whole assembly was rotating and, and rolling and moving on us. But apart from that, it was really pretty simple. So obvious things, upper control arm, that's both bent and rusty. So we're gonna want a new one of those. Uh, both of the lower control arms, those are gonna need replaced. Both calipers as well. We do have some new replacement pads for this one. Those seem totally fine. And although it doesn't look like it, one of these two rotors is bad. And I'll let you guys determine 
which one that is. Spoiler, it's the right one. Uh, apart from that, though, this tire, as we know, was fine, but the other one was very, very flat and uh, actually blown up. It was, it was actually completely exploded, so we do need to purchase a new one of those, but we can't do it right now because it's actually a little too late in the day. So I'm just going to sleep here for a few hours. We'll head across the street, grab some food, grab some water, and uh, we'll probably have to sleep a little bit longer. Let's see if we're going to be subject to uh, a little bit of story time again today. Tool selection? If you have it, you definitely should. I honestly haven't, but I don't think that there's anything new here. Anyways, what we came for was just a single tire. We need a 16, and it does have the, I guess you could call it a higher profile uh, tire on it. Higher sidewall. It's taller than all the other tires. I don't, I don't know how to describe it or explain it. We're looking at $25.30 for the two new front calipers. And then we only need one new front brake rotor. But that does it for the brake stuff. We can move on to suspension. We're going to need both of these lower control arms. And I don't remember if it's the front left or front right upper arm that we need. It's going to be the front right. So we'll scoop that up for $41.40, but that's it. Now we can start reassembling everything. All right, you guys, that is it. That is finally it. Everything underneath the vehicle has been gone through and has all been replaced. So it is all brand spanking new. Looks like a completely different vehicle, honestly. Well, from from down under, right? Not, not from up above. I want to get it lower back down, though, so we can just see sort of how it's going to rest on the ground now that all the suspension components have been changed out. Right, I did forget to reinflate our new tire. Apart from that, it is looking very, very good. So, with the engine removed, keep in mind this is with the engine removed, we're looking at 6,700 buckaroonies for this vehicle. We do still have the rust that we need to, uh, to address at some point as well. And we also need to figure out just what engine we're going to end up dropping back in, old girl. But for right now, you guys, I think that is where we're going to wind things down at for today. Once again, if you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, leave a comment, help support the dream by smashing that subscribe button, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Peace.